Hi, Steve and Caleb from Brown Hills, and today we're going to bring you another episode of Smithbusters. Caleb, take it away. Oh, oh hey, Steve. Didn't see you there. Huh. Uh, so, in today's Smithbuster, we're going to be covering something kind of interesting, or really interesting, actually. Okay. This has been debated, all right? And we're here not to end a debate, but to simply fuel it. So, uh... This one is, all AR-15s are technically piston. The direct impingement isn't actually direct impingement, it's piston operated. I don't like it. I, I just learned how to pronounce direct impingement correctly. So there's some and syllables. And now you want to take it away from me. There's a lot of syllables there, and uh, yeah, I'm, gonna I'm, I'm not going to take it away from you. I'm, just, I'm simply just going to present information, factual information, and I'm just going to let you guys decide. Dude, I may just be a gunsmith, but where's the piston? I, that's, you know? Okay, let's, uh, let's talk about it first. Let's break down what direct impingement is versus what piston operated is. And it doesn't get, you know, much more piston than a HK416 upper, or BRN4, if uh -huh. you will. So, in this design, here's what happens. Let me, let me pull out my visual aids here. All right. So you have, you fire the round, okay? And as that round travels down the barrel, it's going to pass a gas port in the barrel. And that gas is gonna come up. It's going to hit this piston here. So you have a piston and you have a sleeve in the top of the gas block. That gas is then going to push this piston rearward, okay? That piston comes back and hits this strike face on the bolt carrier. Strike face, I like it. Yeah, good word there. All right, it hits that, and then that is what unlocks the bolt itself. Spring-loaded bolt. Spring-loaded bolt, because it's a BRN4 slash HK416, and it's going to throw it rearward. Mm -hmm. All right, so that is your pit. That's a short stroke piston. There's also a long stroke piston. We're not gonna talk about that right now. Please, no. That's the short stroke piston. All right, so. What is direct impingement? So direct impingement is whenever you take that gas, you still have a gas port in the barrel, all right, so that gas is traveling down, up, through the gas port, and now it's traveling down a gas tube. Right. So in a direct impingement situation, that gas would be pressing directly against a bolt carrier, throwing it all back. And that's what's going to unlock the bolt. Now, since the gas isn't actually hitting the carrier in an AR-15, and it's coming down into the carrier and acting with the bolt as well, so here's where it gets interesting. All right. I'll pretend to be interested. Pretend to be interested for a moment, if you will. Okay. So what's going on here? And... Let me, let me see what we're looking at here. Let's, yeah, you can see it there. So you can see your bolt inside the carrier on this cutaway. So that gas travels down into the bolt carrier. In now it's carrier. acting on the actual bolt itself because that bolt has gas rings. So now, remember how I talked about the sleeve and the piston on this 416? Yes. All right, so your bolt is the piston and your bolt carrier is the sleeve. And the pressure drives the two apart. The pressure drives the two apart, right? So on a traditional direct impingement design like your French Moss, um, that gas stops at the bolt carrier. There's a blind hole drilled in the top of it and that gas pushes that blind hole and just blows the whole thing back. That's your traditional direct impingement design. So the, uh, the stoner or the Armalite patent, you know, design is different. It does kind of act like a pist a lot like a piston. Well, I got to admit, this piston theory seems to hold up when you look at the evidence because, well, if you've ever looked at your bolt carrier, you'll see those two holes, though. Those are gas relief holes. And what happens is when the rings on your bolt go past that, all the gas coming into the gas key is coming down here and blowing out the side. Anything excess. Once once the bolt has moved forward and unlocked the gun, off goes the gas. 
perfectly metered system. Um, pretty elegant solution, really. Yeah, and it's pretty interesting. The whole reason they did that is because on a true direct impingement system, uh, because your gas is directly impinging on that top of that carrier, you get a little bit more muzzle flip because the force isn't in line with the bore. Right. Uh, so that was the whole reason they really did that was to get those forces in line because now all your forces in line with the bore because the exchange is happening down on the inside. Right. Once, um, once the bolt and carrier are being forced apart by gas pressure, it's coming straight back. Yeah, nice. so that was the uh, the whole real purpose behind that design, and then they ended up with something that's not even really direct impingement. So, uh, what is a real direct impingement design, like a AG forty two or something? Yeah, so like like I mentioned before, the the French model. Oh, yeah, yeah, how it has that blind hole drilled in the top of the carrier. So, if you would imagine this bolt carrier group here, let's say that this gas key on top didn't have any port that went down to the bottom. Uh -huh. And let's just say the gas was just blowing directly into this portion here without ever making contact with the right. actual bolt. That would be a true direct impingement design. Mm, isn't that dirty? That is really dirty. Uh, Anybody and, out there shoot a moss a lot? Does it, does it carbon up really fast? You know, it, I'd like to know. Yeah, I mean, it, it actually, it does because you're blowing all that gas and it's staying in that area, whereas on this system, you have vent holes. Right, we're blowing it out the side with the brass. We're blowing it out the side. This does still get a lot dirtier than a piston, sure. uh, a, tr a traditional piston design, because the exchange is still happening in the bolt carrier group. So you're gonna have residual carbon and stuff like that yeah. uh, in this system. Whereas, you know, on a, we'll go back to the BRN4 upper here. That exchange is happening up here. so. None of that gas ever makes it back, other than you know what's left over in yeah. the chamber. No, uh, doesn't make it back into the the actual. The four sixteen system is super clean the way it runs. Cleaner and cooler. Yeah. Because you don't have all that heat exchange from those gases as well. But um, yeah, so I know I said I'd leave it for you guys to decide, but if you've decided that it's a true direct impingement system, you're wrong. It's uh, it's technically a piston because your bolt acts as the piston and the carrier acts as the sleeve. Nice. Nice, neat little bundle there. Yeah. So it's um, busted. Busted, I guess. Yeah. I, I know. If you disagree, let us know down below. We'd like to hear from you. In the meantime, smash that like, subscribe button. We'll see you next time with another edition of Smithbusters.